Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be working on finding the nth term of a sequence. A sequence is a list of numbers and we're going to generate kind of like a formula for figuring out and predicting what the next terms could be. Uh, so it's like you're making a function. If you wanted to find the hundredth term, you could plug it into the formula without listing a hundred, for, a hundred terms. So this is why it can be useful and applicable. Um, but let's figure out a few examples and jump right into it. So if you have a list of numbers, 7, negative 11, 15, negative 19, 23, negative 27, and so on, how can we find the nth term or a formula to generate this exact sequence? Uh, there is a pattern that we notice. Notice how there's a positive number and then a negative number, a positive number and a negative number, and so on. So to generate, uh, to show that in, in terms of a uh, formula, so you could say a of n or f of x, is what it's called. Um, you can say negative 1 to the n plus 1. So if you plug in your first term, 1 plus 1 is 2. So negative 1 squared would give you a positive number. Then you plug in 2, you get 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 cubed is a negative number. So that takes care of the alternating signs. But what do we notice about the differences between these numbers here? If you have, you kind of have to look at it, look at each term and the next one after. The difference between, if you ignore the negative signs and the positive signs, the difference between 7 and 11 is 4. The difference between 11 and 15 is 4. The difference between 15 and 19 is 4. 23 and 19, 4. 27 and 23, 4, and so on. So if you know that, recognize that pattern, you say, okay, there's got to be a 4 involved. So this is kind of like your ratio, and um, if you know, you kind of have to think of it like um, y equals mx plus b. Think of it like that. Yeah, this is a good example. x plus b. So if you th imagine 4 being your slope, so if that was your slope, then you would have 4x right now. But you want to know that the first term adds up to 7. So you want to get 4x um, plus b equals 7. So what's b? b would be uh -huh, um, plus 3, right? Or 3. So you have 4x plus 3. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. But now instead of using x, we're going to use n because for some reason... Uh, converging and diverging sequences and series likes to use n instead, and that's why we have our nth term. So that's going to actually be our answer for um, the sequence here. So this is the formula. So if I wanted to find the 25th term, you would plug in 25 for n, and you could get your answer. That's why this is so cool and so practical um, in terms of like predicting patterns with large uh, sequences you want to find, even the millionth value, you could technically figure that out too. This, could, this is just amazing. So stuff like this is really cool. It's just you have to see its applications in order to better understand it. Okay, we're going to do another one here. And I'd say this one involves a little bit more intuition than anything else. There's no real formula like y equals mx plus b. You kind of have to notice this pattern. It's pattern recognition. So notice the top term, or the numerators, are always increasing by 1. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. 3, 4, 5, 6. The problem is good. The next one's going to be 7 over something. But let's figure out what that something would be. So if we know that this is a plus 1 at the top... What about down here? Well, 5, the difference between 5 and 9 is 4, the difference between 9 and 6, so we have that 4 again, it is, appears. So, this one's increasing by 4. Okay, so now that you have that pattern, but we have to know that this is our first term. What would be, n? when n is 1, how can we make it add up to 3? Well, you simply add 2. Um, so, if n is 1, you add 2, and you get 3, so it's our first term. If you have our second term, then you have 2 plus 2 is 4. Then you have our third term, 3 would be n. 3 plus 2 is 5. So you have to see that kind of pattern there. So now that we have that, what about the denominator? Well, we said it's increasing by 4, but we want to make sure... Okay, I guess this is using the y equals mx plus b again now that I think about it. So <laughs> this kind of idea, we have our 4 is the slope, you could imagine and we want it to equal 5. And we know, well, let's think about this. Yeah, so 
you could say if everything's increasing by 4, we, what would b be? b would have to be equal to 1, so that means you would have 4n plus 1. And to check your work to see if that really makes sense, you plug in your first term, and you say, okay, 1 times 4 is 1 plus 1 is 5. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Hey, look, it's working. So that would actually be your term, but now we have to see if it converges or diverges. So, now that we have our function, and you want to determine if it converges or diverges, you simply take the limit of the function. I'm not going to write the whole thing, but I'm going to do a little trick I like to show. Um, so, since you're approaching infinity, infinity plus 2 versus infinity plus 1, which one's bigger? You would think infinity plus 2, but theoretically, they are the same. So, what you can do is you can ignore these two terms here. Now, if you think of this alge algebraically, as uh, the numbers get really, really big, these terms will cancel, and they would go to 1, so you would have this equal to 1 over 4. So algebraically speaking, you can manipulate your function by reducing all the unnecessary values and canceling out uh, terms to yield what it would converge to, or in this case. So this series does converge, or excuse me, the sequence. So that is our answer for this, and our function would, would have been, would be this as well. Okay, we're going to do another one. This one's kind of tricky. You have to have some pre-knowledge like knowledge about sequences beforehand. But if we still take the same approach um, to how we, how we use our intuition to figure out problems, what you can do is, you, again, you notice that it's alternating. So you have this uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1 idea in your function. But what else do we have going on? Well, the terms are getting smaller, right? The terms are getting smaller, but by what factor? So you can determine this factor by dividing the second term by the first term. So if you have negative 4 over 12, negative 4 over 12, that reduces to negative 1 third. Now, this is what we call r. Um, notice that it's decreasing by and alternating. Um, by a factor of one-third. And this is something called a geometric sequence. And a geometric sequence has this formula or notation. And what this is saying is you pretty much you take your first term, you multiply it by that r factor here, that common value you found, and you subtract it from, or you take it to the power of n minus 1, and that is a geometric series, now you, or sequence. Now you can notice this same pattern here. Uh, what's our first term if we follow the formula would be 12 and the r we found to be was negative one third and it's to the power of n minus one so this one if you had no knowledge of sequences and series it would pretty much be really really difficult to figure out um, but this knowledge you kinda have to recognize beforehand and that just comes with studying and practice but hope this helped uh, with determining that walking through that intuition um, in determining the nth term for a sequence.